This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine and welcome to JSA TV. With us today, we have Mr. Kirk Ophel. Kirk is the founder of DCAC, Data Center Austin Conference. Kirk is also the executive vice president of platform delivery at Aligned Energy. Kirk, welcome to JSA TV. Hey, Dean. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk. I'm very excited. Outstanding. Well, Kirk, we're going to just jump right in. I understand that DCAC is entering its fifth year, and there has been a lot of talk about uh, this conference, these events, um, with um, with a number of people actually saying that it is quite a diversion from the more sleepy or um, maybe stale would be a good word for some data center conferences. Um, DCAC is disruptive and defies convention. That is one of the things that I've heard quite a bit about DCAC. But for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about the event and ultimately what you set out to accomplish when establishing um, the event? Yeah, you got it. Thanks for the question. So uh, this was really a David versus Goliath opportunity for some people like myself that have been to a ton of tech conferences that were just kind of sick of the same tech conferences. We decided to break out our slingshot and go against the regular industry standard of what a conference should look like. And uh, we tried to create what would be the anti data center conference, which is <laughs> what hopefully now is discovered is one of the most disruptive conferences in our space. It's not the largest, but it hopefully is the most meaningful. So selfishly, I live in Austin, Texas. It's the live music capital of the world, it has a great deal of energy, a strong tech vibe here. And uh, we decided that we were going to write a code of, of requirements to make DC EC come to life. And uh, it's taken on a life of its own in the last four years. This will be our fifth year. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm hearing. And you're actually segueing into the event uh, better than I could actually myself. Um, but, you know, all events kind of are, are built from um, kind of a speaker base. Who's going to be there? What are they going to talk about? Why should someone attend? Um, you have been quoted as saying that the, the speakers at DCAC are thought leaders with, quote, big fat brains and even bigger ideas. Number one, I love that. Um, but um, they, they come from outside uh, the echo chamber of, of kind of the data center community. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those speakers and uh, what our viewers or attendees might expect from them at the event? No, you got it. Um, it's been a crawl, walk, run evolution of how this conference has evolved from speakers because that really is the quote unquote content and the value. So. Like, uh, you know, you have to be the same as some of these other conferences before you can be different. So in our early years, we created panels and we put all the most prevalent data center owners and operators up there, people that were deploying the largest volume of capital into this space. And then when we were lucky, we'd pick up a couple of enterprise end users and we'd bring them in as well. And we, um, we kind of evolved from that where it's more like a South by Southwest meets TED Talks theme, high energy, standalone speakers. And instead of, uh, I mean, we discovered with this compute demand stuff, you can't get ahead when you're trying to get even. So I felt that the narrative in the first year was really focused on what are we doing with today's state of the union? And really what I discovered is we needed to be talking about future compute demands. And that was technology that was still evolving. That was five years, seven years, 10 years away from being adopted by the mainstream. So we completely shifted and we pivoted pretty hard to future compute demands. And that's the only focus. You're going to see a lot of people that are uh, technologists and thought leaders that are going to hit the edge. We're going to have a huge focus on VR and AR. Um, artificial intelligence will be covered, but the edge in artificial intelligence will definitely be a distant second to virtual reality, augmented reality, and the impact that consumable or I'm sorry, uh, consumer wearable devices will have on the internet demand as it grows. So. There's other things that are there, the hyperscale, the cloud, but the things that are really emerging that are going to have the next, next big spike for us in our vertical, those are the things that we're going to be talking about. So we have companies that you have not heard of before, and we'll bring in keynote speakers like IBM and Intel and PayPal and EIEIO, but we want to introduce some groups that you've never heard of before, but they're going to be disruptive, and they're going to be talking about things that are going to be pretty prevalent in about two years from now. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. So the content clearly is there, but um, the networking atmosphere 
is uh, is there too and a bit unconventional. I'm hearing um, that uh, DCAC is be, has become known for, as you mentioned, music and you know the South South by Southwest has become a very big cultural um, event. And it sounds to me like DCAC is kind of um, working its way or has become some uh, somewhat of a cultural event as well with music, uh, food, vibe, and some truly out of the box amenities. Um, to name a few, um, intravenous vitamin therapy, hand rolled Cuban cigars, straight razor shaves for men, and salon style blowouts for women and for men. They all contribute to that networking atmosphere. So, so why why um, why all the unconvention. I don't even know if that's a word, but but tell our viewers a little bit about um, that merger of, of content and technology and kind of cultural and these unconventional ways of putting together an event. How does that ultimately lend to a more positive or fruitful um, networking event? Sure. Now, another really great question. So I, like many people in this industry, have attended many conferences in which we've never even walked through the front door. But we do stay in the VIP extreme networking that takes place outside of those events. I've discovered that when you put someone in an environment where they feel more relaxed and more comfortable, there's a greater exchange of ideas that take place. And um, I didn't want to create a conference that had two different things. Typically, there's the conference that's structured, and then there's all the things that happen outside of the conference that some people didn't get a chance to be a part of. What we thought we would do is try to create such an amazing environment where a greater exchange of ideas could be take place and no one would want to leave. So everything was merged into one. You're going to have the opportunity to meet with people you otherwise would have never met with had you not been there. And, um, and because there's so many great things with high energy taking place around that, that conference, there's nowhere else to go. So all the energy, all the action, all the traction of two conferences merged together into one at DCAC. So we think that the networking elements of this conference are just as important as what you're going to learn or what you're going to hear from the from the speakers the networking is just as important we don't try to trivialize that at all yeah no it's it sounds like um some of these some of these kind of ancillary pieces of the event ultimately lend to a more a more conducive networking event yeah. so um, I mean, you, you're, it, it, the audience then becomes captive. So I, I, I absolutely love that. So the theme of DCAC 2019 is the next evolution of technology growing tomorrow's workloads. So as we enter this, I guess you could say the fourth industrial revolution and begin to see technologies such as those that you mentioned earlier, AI, autonomous vehicles, IoT, augmented and virtual reality, wearables, et cetera. You know, what do you see as the role of data centers in, um, in this significant transformation? Sure. Yeah. I mean, the data center's capability and limitations will define what we as the consumer get to enjoy in the, in the luxuries of technology. So uh, I think that when you see um, high adoption rates for consumer wearable devices in the years to come, I'd say in the next eight quarters, you're going to see a lot of that as more technology is being rolled out to the market that's more economically efficient. I think that the aggregate volume of demand and technology requirements that go with that are going to demand that there's more data centers, more powerful data centers on in more places. So these secondary, you know, not just NFL cities, but the secondary markets, the third tier markets that are considered edge, all those markets where all the eyeball content and video caching is going to be, um, it's going to, it's going to determine the quality of life in that market. If there's not a strong enough data center that are support e-commerce and uploading videos and sharing, tweets and all those things. So the data center will be, a, you know, the fourth and fifth utility of life in the days to come and the years to come. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off script. I know that we're getting short on time here, but we've talked a little bit about um, what you might see as uh, your some of your predictions with regarding with regard to the industry. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about your predictions with regard to the DCAC event? Let's. What is it going to look like in the next five years? No, God, man, it's, I wish I had a crystal ball. If I did, I knew you're, you're, you're welcome, Kirk. <laughs> what I would think is we're going to continue to introduce, we're, we're going to always have data center operators and those that are in the ecosystem of a data center, those are the architects and the engineers that design it, the contractors and the, the builders of all the trades that bring it to life, as well as all the manufacturers of equipment, gear, software that put the technology together to create this huge void for servers and storage and networking and software. 
I think that we're going to be up the stack about five different degrees in a couple of years from now, where the only thing we'll be talking about will be these growing compute demands and how to get a linear trend on them to understand how flexible data center owner operators need to be designing for their space mm-hmm. and, and um, how scalable it has to be because the just in time requirement for this technology is it's only going to speed up. It's never going to go down. So I think that what you'll see is a shift from the void, the people that create the void to the what's demand, what's drawing the, what's dictating what the size and the volume and capability of that void looks like. So again, we'll always have owners and operators as a part of our summit, but really those technologists are going to be the ones that are going to give us a peek around the, you know, the green curtain of Oz and understand what are these big fat brains thinking of that we're going to have to deal with ripple effects for in the next five years. So DCAC's focus is to try to get ahead of that stuff. We're not talking about what's going on now and how people are doing things now. We're talking about why people are doing things now and what the impact of that's going to be in five years from now. That's what the conference is for. Yeah, I, I dig it. And frankly, I'm sold. Hopefully, uh, the powers that be here at JSA will uh, let me out of the cage and I will actually attend that event. I know that uh, uh, some of the others here are excited about it as well. Um, for our viewers um, that want to know more about the event, where should they go? You got it. www.dcac-live.com. They could just also Google Data Center Conference Austin and they'll come up. It's, it's the only data center conference in Austin, Texas, and and I think that they'll, with breadcrumbs, be able to find us relatively easy. Outstanding. Kirk, thank you for being here, and thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.